Another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Where's our play take us, Lee? To Egypt, Ken. Ah, as the travel folders say, beautiful Egypt, the Blue Nile, the Sphinx, the Pyramids. Well, now, wait a minute. Yeah, Ken, but our story has a bit more to it than just what the tourist sees. We meet a mysterious traveler on a secret mission, a mission involving danger in the desert and international intrigue. And our first act will begin right after your short message. Did you ever stop to wonder why your United States Army has such a long tradition of victory? Well, the secret is a very simple one. It's training that pays off. Old soldiers will tell you that it's good training plus the best leadership that spells victory. Your United States Army has always emphasized both. Visit the United States Army and the United States Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant and learn all the facts. Enlist in the United States Army today. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Nick, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Three Planes to Cairo. The city sat with the high, jagged mountains humped up behind it and looked out over the arid plain. It was a city whose foundations were steeped in antiquity, and since its earliest beginnings it had known three conditions common to its location and surroundings, heat, filth, and poverty. The influence of Western civilization had done little to change these conditions. True, there was the airport, the rickety railroad, there was Palaha Street with its modern buildings, and there were the homes of the wealthy. But for the most part, time had passed this city by, and its narrow, walled, unlighted streets looked and smelled and sounded much as they had a thousand years ago. Be careful with those bags. Is this dump supposed to be a hotel? What a bird. Well, come on. Might as well get inside before I fry. Some air conditioning. What are those things up there? Helicopters? Those are fans, monsieur. They circulate the air to make it cool. You don't say. To make it cool, huh? Uh-huh. Wonders of the East. You have a reservation this cow barn for Mr. N.K. Lawrence? I will check, monsieur. Do that little thing, will you? And you, drop those bags and scram. That's right. Right there. Back sheesh. Effendi. Back heat, you fella. Back heat, you at the heel of my boot. Go on, scram. Monsieur, he is only a poor porter. He must earn his bread, too. Look, I didn't ask him to bring my bags in here. He did it all by himself. Now stop breaking my heart and give me the key to my room. I'm very sorry, Mr. Lawrence, but there does not seem to be a reservation for you. What do you mean? Don't try to hand me any of that bunk. The travel agency in Beirut sent you a wire a week ago. It must have been another hotel. It was that... not another hotel. It was this flea-bitten rat trap. Now, I've traveled a long way today, and I'm tired, and I don't want any trouble from you. Give me a sweet in this stinking test hole, and give it to me fast. But, Miss Don't Jeff. but me. Get me that sweet, or get me the manager. I'll see what I can do. You'll see what you can do in a big hurry if you're smart. Do you have a bar in this cave? Over there, monsieur. Well, I'll be in there. Get that sweet. And be quick about it. Why do the ones like that have to come here? Why don't they stay on? I'd like to cut his throat. Waiter! Waiter! Come here! What kind of food do you call this? I asked for a steak and you bring me a hunk of cured leather. Look at this. You expect me to eat it? Take it away. 
Get me what I ordered and bring me another bottle of that rot gut. I said, bring me another drink. And don't give me any of your sass about clothes enough. If you're not careful, I'll buy this clip joint and have you thrown out. I don't know why I came here anyway. Isn't a decent-looking dame in the whole country? Are you uh, sure about that? Mm. <laughs> well, huh. as I live and breathe, where did you come from? Well, I've been sitting across the room with some friends. We uh, couldn't help but notice you. I always stand out in the crowd. It's especially your voice. Pity the poor stranger. <laughs> Are you as rude to the hired help at home? To me, rude? I'm not rude. I'm, I'm just demanding. <laughs> when I pay for service, I expect to get it. What's your name? And won't you sit down and have one with me? Well, I shouldn't, but I will. I don't think I like you, but my friends will want to know who you are and why you're here. Which is none of their business. <laughs> but they'll still want to know. Waiter! Garçon! Boy! Whatever your name is, let's have another one here. And I'll get the heat got me. I didn't see you across the room. Oh, we're over there in the shadows. Who are you hiding on? <laughs> My name is Nick Lawrence. Who are you? Marcia Clark. And what brings you here, Mr. Lawrence? Well, I wanted to go someplace where it was cool. How about you? You tell me, and I'll tell you. Why don't I get up and make a public announcement? Then you wouldn't have to tell your friends. You've been making public announcements since you came in here. Why don't you just tell me quietly? I'm shy. <laughs> okay, if I make you any happier. In a weak moment, I got roped in on a tour, a big tour. Gonna see the world, you know. By the time we'd reached Alexander, I'd had enough. I figured I'd come that far, so I might just well see it all by myself. I jumped ship, as it were, kissed the boys and girls goodbye, and by some incredible misfortune, I found myself here. You mean you came all the way from Alexandria? No, I've hit every pest hole in between. Do you know where I'm going tomorrow and what I'm going to do, Marcia, old thing? I can hardly wait to know. I'm going out to that airport, and if necessary, I'm going to buy the joint. Then I'm going to get someone to start flying west. And I'm going with them. And we're going to keep going west until I get back to the land of the free and the home of the brave. You don't like it here? It'll be terrible saying goodbye, but somehow I'm going to manage it. You must be a wealthy man, Mr. Lawrence, to be able to accomplish all this. Marsha, I'm stinking rich. <laughs> How would you like to marry me for my money? Oh, I'd rather marry you for your sweet disposition. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now that we've gotten that taken care of, what is a rare gem of beauty like yourself doing in this uh, paradise? Right now I'm living here. My father's an engineer. He works for the government of this country. Improving roads and that sort of thing. Do you mind if I say he has his work cut out for him? And why don't you get him to change his job? Oh, it's really not so bad once you get used to it. Quite a few American and English people here. Oh, getting used to it, I suppose. Where are you from back in the States? Mostly New York City. Hmm. Doesn't have anything compared to this. When do you leave? Ooh, nearly four years ago. Wow. When I get back, I'll go see the mayor and give him your best. Mm -hmm. Who is the mayor now? Don't tell a soul, but I am. <laughs> Where are those drinks? Stop making a pain in the neck of yourself, Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> you know, you're all right. You're, you're a real fine. Do you suppose if, if I should get weak and decided to stay over a day, you could be my guide and show me what there is to be seen here? I don't say I'll get weak, but if I do... Would you? <laughs> that might be a lot of fun. We might even make your stay here a more unpleasant one. Father, this is Nick Lawrence. Well, how do you do, sir? Marcia's been telling me all about you. Been showing you around a bit, eh? She certainly has, and a better guide I never had. <laughs> Well, I hope she's uh, changed the rather poor opinion you had of our fair metropolis. For some strange reason, I like it better and better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the heat takes a bit of getting used to. Where'd you go today? Out to the ruins. Oh, you interested in ancient civilizations, Mr. Lawrence? I'm getting him interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go out on the terrace and have something cool. Very fine meal. 
that's because I didn't cook it. Cigar, Lord? No, no, thank you. No, I'd rather have one of these. Hmm. Thanks. Heard a rather odd yarn today. What about? Oh, probably just somebody's imagination working overtime. Something from soup. The story is that for quite some time now, there's been another American here in hiding. In hiding? What was he, a, a criminal? No, it seems he came over the mountains from where I don't know, but uh, I could give a pretty good guess. Aha, intrigue. I guess that's the idea. According to what I heard, uh, when he got here, he was too sick to go on. So he went underground, hiding out in the native quarter somewhere. But why? A rumor has it, wherever he came from, he brought some very valuable and secret information with him. Shades of Alfred Hitchcock. Exactly. It seems that he thinks there are people here who are after him. He's too ill to go out alone, and he's afraid to trust anyone. Well, who's hiding him, then? I don't know. Maybe he has some native friends. Oh, it sounds like a lot of nonsense. Well, that's what I said, but it makes an interesting story. I imagine that sort of thing is going on all over the world today. No doubt it is, but it sounds a little hard to take. Who told you, Father? One of Stanton's boys told him. And what did Reggie think? Well, not much. Still, it could be true, or part of it. And if there is a fellow American here in trouble, I'd like to help him out. All I could. Wonderful time, aren't you? Glad you enjoyed it, Nick. Tomorrow at 10? You bet. Good night. Good night. Effendi needs a shine. Go on, beat it. Effendi needs a... Oh, uh, uh, maybe you're right. Effendi does need a shine. Ahmed is the greatest shiner of shoes in all Islam. He has the eyes of a hawk. Ah, uh, hold steady the shoe on the box, Effendi. How romantic of you to suggest we come out here. I thought these ruins would be a little better by starlight. Oh, pity there isn't a moon. You know, you and your father have been very kind to me. Can't help wondering why. It's Clark hospitality to begin with. And perhaps I could see through the impression you try to make. Impression? I don't get you. You know you were lonely. Maybe a little bit frightened. Oh, <laughs> bright girl, aren't you? <laughs> That's what my father tells me. He likes you. He asked me today if you wouldn't like to move out of that hotel and come and stay with us for a while. You got swell of it. Well, I might even take him up on it. It would be rather nice. Wouldn't it? Hmm. That was nice. Let's try it again. I have a beard and a prophet. It is unworthy of me to interrupt such paradise as this. What the devil? Stand as you are, Effendi. How dare you? What do you think? Good brother, Mohammed will bear anything for it. Oh, fix your... You, you killed him! His met, dear lady... He killed himself by his rashness. Up here, Ali, take his body and put it on one of the horses. Madame, you will be so good as to walk back to your car. We shall make you as comfortable as we can. They will find you in the morning. You stupid pig spawn. You've done more here than you think. You'll pay for this. Allah the merciful is just. Allah, the compassionate, is wise. In she, madame. Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Nick Lawrence in the proudly we hail production, Three Planes for Cairo, will return in just a moment for the second act. The mark of a man. Do you know it when you see it? Every time you see the uniform of the United States Army, you're looking at the mark of a man. The insignia that stamped their wearers as good soldiers, worthy descendants of the American combat soldiers who won and preserved your liberties. But the American soldier who wears this visible sign of courage needs your help. 
If you can qualify to wear the United States Army uniform known around the world as the mark of a man, go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and prove it by enlisting now in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Nick Lawrence, we present the second act of Three Planes for Cairo. Way, Effendi. There are stairs here of stone. We go down softly. The wall turns. And now, Effendi Masters, I have brought your friend. Close the door. Make make a light. The lamp's there. Jim! Jim, you old mountain goat. Nick. Now you lie back there and take it easy. Oh, if it weren't for Ahmed, I'd, I'd have been finished long ago. The Effendi is too kind to one who is unworthy. Say, how did Ahmed spot me so easily? Oh, I figured if the message I sent to O'Brien got through, somebody would be sent either to try and get me out or pick up what I've got. I even thought it might be you. Ahmed spotted you almost as soon as you got here. <laughs> said you were very noticeable. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much, though. Oh, they'd, they'd watch any stranger, Nick. I think this plan was plenty smart. Yeah. Ahmed, there are all kinds of rumors drifting around the Stooks that there's an American hidden here in the city. I have heard nothing, and I would have heard. Then how do you suppose an American engineer by the name of Clark would know all about it? It was a little too pat and a little bit too complete. Well, what would be his point in, in mentioning it to you? He was most sincere in his desire to help the hidden American, if the story should be true. Oh, I get it. You need help. You go to him. And that's all for the both of us. They had me nearly convinced, too, but there was one thing that happened that was completely out of character. You know what it was, Ahmed? This unwise one would say... The lady, upon finding her friend murdered before her eyes, knew nothing of shock or horror, but only anger. Right. Now we make a plan. A plan based on one key point. Nick Lawrence, God rest his soul, is dead. Stop walking around like an ox. Shut your silly face. You've messed up the whole thing. I messed it up. I messed it up. I like that. Why Speak you... English, you idiot. Is it my fault because the fool got himself murdered? How they ever could have put you in this service, I don't know. Did it ever enter that empty head of yours that this whole thing could have been a trick? A trick to get Lawrence to master. A trick to make us all think that Lawrence is dead. But I saw the man shoot him. You realize if you had done as I'd suggested, we'd have had some of our people at the ruins, this wouldn't have happened. But oh no, you could handle the stupid American all by yourself. Well, what if it was a trick? And I don't say it was. He trusted us. He'd come to us for help. We hope. That man was no fool and we've lost him because you insisted that he was. I hope you realize, my sometime daughter, what will happen to us if Masters gets away. You all set, Jim? Get on each side of me. I hope, hope it's not too far. Are you sure your undertaker friend has his signal straight, Ahmed? He will be waiting, Effendi. Everything is ready. How do we look? As <laughs> muscle men and on this dark night, no one would notice how you look. Then lead on, Muhammad. Marsha! Marsha, where are you? Out here. What's the trouble? This is the trouble. Lawrence's body was found last night by a couple of Arab beggars. Well, good. I told you they killed him. There's only one trouble with the whole thing. What's that? No one has seen the body but the men who supposedly found it and Hamouad, the undertaker. He claimed he didn't want to take any chances with disease. So the late Mr. Lawrence rests in a sealed coffin. Oh. Well, what do you think? I think it may very well be a blind that the coffin is empty and Lawrence wants to throw all suspicion off his trail so he can work at getting masters out. Well, couldn't you go to the authorities and demand identification be positively I made? I already have, but they assured me it was Lawrence. The clothes were his and so forth. Well, what about fingerprints? The undertaker got around that nicely by saying he'd been mutilated, hands cut off at the wrist. How thoughtful. 
Well, what do we do now? Two things. First, we pay a visit, a very respectful and tearful visit, to Hamouard's undertaking establishment, mm -hmm. where we find out just what they plan to do with that coffin. Mm -hmm. And second, we decide the quickest and quietest way in which we can have a few words with Hamouard himself. We thank you very much. This is a very great shock to both my daughter and myself. Will he be buried here? The authorities are attempting to reach his family in America. They must decide what is to be done, Effendi. Of course. I suppose you should hear within a day or two. <laughs> Come, Marcia. Yes, Father. <laughs> How is it, boy? Fine. Won't be long. Listen, you take this stuff. It's microfilm, just in case I don't make it. Nuts. You're going to make it. Oh, better if you take it anyway. You know the story on it now. You're quite a guy, Jim. I don't know how you ever got across those mountains. <laughs> Neither do I. And now look where we are. Coffins to the right of me. Coffins to the left of me. I'm a wide seller. has all the beauty of a ghoul's housing project. <laughs> But it's a pretty good place for peace and quiet. Yeah, I'm practicing now. Quiet. Effendi. I'm Ahmed. It is nearly dawn. Did the cablegram arrive all right? The authorities notified Hamouad early in the evening. Arrangements have been made to fly the coffin to Cairo, where it will be claimed by a brother of the deceased. Good. Now, what plane? There is English transport that will do the job. The coffin must be at the airport by sunrise. We better get cracking. A plane has also been chartered to carry Sheikh Wad Ben Hussein and his wazir Ahmed on a pilgrimage of great importance. What about the pilot? Are you sure he can be trusted? He is a friend. He's got more friends than you and I have whiskers. Ahmed, you're slightly terrific. <laughs> Here, put your arm around my neck, Jim. We're ready to start the last lap. Okay, easy now. There. How's that, Jim? I'd, I'd rather not answer that. All right. Now, the hose comes up through a hole in the side. There's another one here you can use if you need to. You'll have to pull this plug. Sure, I, I got it all figured out. Give me the hose and let's get this show on the road. See you in Cairo, Buster. Okay, let's get it on the truck. Good luck. Alakam Asalam, Amuad. Alakam Asalam. Good morning, Hamuad. Let you and I have a little talk. Well, he's on his way. We'd better get on ours. It is best not to be observed. Let us go between the hangars. Tariq awaits us in his plane by the last one. And from the looks of it, we're not going to get to Cairo a, a, quite a bit later than Jim. Will you please tell me what you found out, dragging me out of bed at this hour? I don't know why I bothered with all the help you've been. I've chartered a plane for Cairo. Cairo? Yes, Cairo. That's where the coffin is on its way to. And it's not empty. You know, for a while there, I, I didn't think we were ever going to get here. Poor Jim, I hope he hadn't gone fatty. He's in the building there? Yeah, where they store air freight. Were you able to make arrangements? We'll be leaving by air in half an hour. Do they know, Effendi? They know who I am. I had to tell them. They know I'll have someone with me, no questions asked. Here we are now. Hold the flashlight. We won't bother to turn on any lights. Wow, will you look at all this freight? Uh, where do we find the thing? Shine the light over there. No, no, no. No, over here. There, Fendi. We're here, Jim. Give me that hammer. See if you can find a pry or something. <laughs> Jim. Jim. Here, get some of this in you. Come on up, fella. I'll get you out of there. Do you mind? Do you mind if I... Never look at one of those things again. I think I can save you the trouble. Don't move, Lawrence. What? Well, the good Mr. Klarkovich. Or was it Clark? And his lovely daughter. It'll be a pleasure to make your death the real thing this time. This is what you call catching two birds in one coffin. 
Turn around. I'd much rather shoot you in the back. This is just where I shall shoot you, you spawn of the devil, if you do not drop that gun at once. Get your hands into the air, both of you. Drop it. Or I'll pepper the front of you while he works on the rear. You too, sweetheart. Now, get your arm around my neck, Jim. Okay, up the daisy. Now, you got any suggestions, Ahmed? Ahmed will be only too happy to escort these honored people back to where they came from. Tariq will be glad to take them free of charge. Sounds good to me. Now, I'm going to clear out of here with Jim and get down to the air terminal. I'll have Tariq taxi up here. They might catch cold walking in the night air. If they give you any trouble, Ahmed, use your own judgment. I know it's good. Jim and I are both sorry there isn't more time to say goodbye. You understand? This unworthy one will always remember you and ask Allah to guide your ways. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye, Ahmed. Thanks. Can't walk, Nick. Then I'll carry him. <clears throat> there you are. Well, goodbye, you lovely people. It's been real cozy. Alakum wassalam, Ahmed. Peace be with you, Effendi. Our star, Lee Casey, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. The United States Army has a good deal for high school graduates to continue their educations when they're in uniform. You see, the Army's really a vast technical training school. Bright young Americans are learning all about such interesting subjects as radar, radio, electronics, chemistry, and many others. They're building a great future for themselves in the Army, and you can do it too. What's more, you'll be proud of your job, proud of the uniform you wear, for it's the mark of a man. But why not get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you now? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for full details. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Three Planes for Cairo was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnier. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. We hope you'll be with us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled The Wreckers. And it's a story of the sea, a story of piracy, treachery, and revenge. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.